Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 9 of the course on statistics and probability. You will recall that in the last lecture and the lecture before, we have been discussing various measures of central tendency, in other words, averages. We started from the mode, we went on to the arithmetic mean and the weighted mean and after that we discussed the median. Uske baad aapko yaad hoga ke median mein jo partitioning ka concept involved hai, us concept ko humne aage badhaya and I talked about the quartiles, deciles and percentiles. Aaj hum central tendency ke do or measures discuss karenge, the geometric mean and the harmonic mean. And after that, I will also uh, briefly mention a few other measures of central tendency. So, let us begin with the geometric mean. The geometric mean of n positive values x1, x2, so on up to xn is defined as the positive nth root of their product. In other words, g is equal to the nth root of x1 into x2 into x3, so on up to xn, where each of the x values is greater than 0. Aap note ki jay ke meinne aap se kaha ke ye jo values hain, these should be positive. Aap sochiye ke agar aap ke data set mein koi ek value bhi 0 ke barabar hui, to aap ka geometric mean jo hai, that will become 0. Because when you multiply that value with all the other values, regardless of whatever the other values might be, this one zero value will make the product equal to zero. So, that is why the geometric mean is defined in this manner that it is the nth root of the product of the values when the values are all positive. Negative hongi to bhi problem a jayega. The second thing to note is that it is easy to apply this formula if the number of data values is not very large. But if you have a considerably large number of values, students, you will agree that it may be quite laborious to find the nth root. Well, of course, if you have a computer at your disposal, then it is not difficult. But if you are doing it with an ordinary calculator, it may be quite difficult to find the ninth root, for example, if you have nine values. This problem is overcome by the use of logarithms. Taking logarithms to the base 10, our formula becomes log of g is equal to 1 over n times log of x1 plus log of x2 plus so on up to log of xn. Ye is liye ke jaisa ke aap pehle se jante hain, jab bhi kisi product ka log liya jata hai, to wo sum mein convert ho jata hai. That is log of the product is equal to the sum of the logarithms. Hence, the formula becomes log of g is equal to sigma log x over n. But since we are interested in finding g, therefore, we take the anti-log and the final formula is that g is equal to anti-log of sigma log x over n. Let me apply this uh, concept of the geometric mean to a very simple example. Suppose that we have values 45, 32, 
37, 46, 39, 36, 41, 48, and 36. If we want to apply the original formula, then we will need to compute the numerical value of the ninth root of the product of all these values as you now see on the screen. But in order to simplify the computations, we will take the log of each of these values and we obtain the figures as you now see log of 45 is 1.6532, log of 32 gives us 1.5052 and so on. Adding this column of log x, the sum is 14.3870, dividing that by the total number of observations that is 9, log of g comes out to be 1.5986. The last step is to take the antilog and doing so the geometric mean of these 9 values comes out to be 39.68. Ye to hua formula for the geometric mean in case of raw data. Now let us see what will be the modified version of this formula in case of grouped data. As you now see on the screen, the formula in this case will be that g is equal to the nth root of x1 raised to f1 into x2 raised to f2 and so on up to xk raised to fk. In other words, each value of x has to be multiplied by itself f times before we go to the step of taking the nth root. In terms of logarithms, the formula becomes log of g is equal to 1 over n multiplied by f1 into log of x1 plus f2 into log of x2 plus so on up to fk into log of xk which is equal to sigma f log x over n and Taking the antilogarithm, g is equal to antilog of sigma f log x over n. Obviously, this formula is much easier to handle than the first one in which we had to take all those powers. Students, let me now apply this formula to the example of the EPA mileage ratings that we have been dealing with. As you now see on the screen, the x values that is the midpoints of the various classes are 31.45, 34.45, 37.45 and so on, exactly the same as what we had earlier. And now in order to compute the geometric mean, we have to take the logarithm of each one of these x values and multiply that logarithm by the corresponding frequency. So, in this manner we obtain the last column that you now see on the screen and the sum of this column comes out to be 47.3042. Dividing it by the total number of cars that we had that is 30, we get 1.5768 and taking the antilog of this number, the geometric mean comes out to be 37.74 miles per gallon. You will recall 
that when we found the arithmetic mean of the same data set, the answer was somewhat different. That is obvious, the formula of the mean is quite different from that of the geometric mean and so it is obvious that we will have some difference. Sawal ye paida hota hai ke ye jo mukhtalif formulae hume available hain, in mein se kis formulae ko kahan pe apply kiya jai, kis situation mein we should apply the arithmetic mean or kis situation mein hum geometric mean apply karein. So, the answer to this question as far as the geometric mean is concerned, let me explain this point to you with the help of an example. Suppose that it is found that a firm's turnover has increased during 4 years by the following amounts. In 1958, it was 2000 pounds, whereas in 1959, it became 2500, so that the percentage compared with the earlier year is 125. Dusre mein, 1959 ka jo turnover hai, that is 125 percent of the turnover of 1958. Similarly, the turnover for 1960 is 5000 pounds and that is 200 percent of the turnover of 1959. Also, the turnover for 1961, which is 7,500 pounds sterling, is 150 percent of the turnover of 1960. So, you have noted that the turnover of this company is not a constant rate, se increase nahi kar raha, balke it is increasing at different rates over different years. Now, suppose that the owner of the company is interested in finding the average rate of growth of the turnover per year. If he finds the arithmetic mean, he will obtain 125 plus 200 plus 150 plus 140 divided by 4 equal to 153.75 percent as the average annual rate of turnover growth. But students, if this percentage is used to calculate the turnover from 1958 to 1962 inclusive, we find that this will give us an incorrect answer. But students, if we use this figure to compute the turnover for the four years, we will find that the answer is incorrect. As you now see on the screen, if we utilize this figure, we obtain 153.75 percent of 2000 equal to 3075, 153.75 percent of 3075 equal to 4728, 153.75 percent of 4728 equal to 7269 and 153.75 percent of 7269 equals 11176. Yani, is rate ke mutabik agar chalte jayen, so, the turnover comes out to be 11,176 pounds sterling, whereas the actual turnover figure for 1962 is 10,500 pounds sterling. Students, you have seen that arithmetic mean ne Hame ek aisa figure diya, which gave us an incorrect result at the end. Aye dekhte hain 
کہ اگر ہم جومیٹرک مین استعمال کریں اس سچویشن میں تو واٹ ڈو وی گیٹ ان دس کیس ایز یو ناؤ سی آن دا اسکرین دا جومیٹرک مین آف دا ٹرن اوور فگرز از ون ٹوینٹی فائیو ان ٹو ٹو ہنڈریڈ ان ٹو ون ففٹی ان of this product comes out to be 151.37%. And if we utilize this value to obtain the individual turnover figures, we find that 151.37% of 2000 is 3027. 151.37% of 3027 is 4583 and continuing in this manner the final figure comes out to be 10500 exactly the same as what we had in the original data students اس کمپیوٹیشن کی انٹرپریٹیشن ہم کس طرح کریں گے اس کی انٹرپریٹیشن یہ ہے کہ اگر اس کمپنی کا ٹرن اوور ان تمام سالوں کے دوران ایک کانسٹنٹ ریٹ سے انکریز کرتا تو دیٹ ریٹ آف گروتھ دیٹ ریٹ آف انکریز وڈ ہیو بین ففٹی ون پوائنٹ تھری سیون پرسینٹ پلیز نوٹ کیجیے آئی ڈڈ ناٹ سے ون ففٹی ون پوائنٹ تھری سیون پرسینٹ آئی سیڈ دی ریٹ آف انکریز اف اٹ واز کانسٹنٹ اف اٹ واز دا سیم فرام ایئر ٹو ایئر اٹ وڈ بی ففٹی ون پوائنٹ تھری سیون پرسینٹ سو آئی ہوپ اسٹوڈنٹس دیٹ دس ایگزامپل ہیز بین ایبل ٹو کنوے ٹو یو ویری کلیئرلی the kind of situation in which this is the most appropriate average to use. But of course, this kind of a situation is encountered relatively less frequently in practice. Jo sab se zyada commonly used measure of central tendency hai, wo to bahar hal arithmetic mean hi hai. Let us consider Another example that illustrates the interpretation of the geometric mean. Suppose that a factory worker receives a 5% increase in salary this year and a 15% increase next year. It should be noted, students, that a 5% increase in salary means that if the salary was rupees 100 at the beginning of the first year then it becomes 105 at the beginning of the second year in other words the salary at the beginning of the second year is 105% of the salary at the beginning of the first year or we can say that the value is 1.5 0.5 Similarly it should be noted that a 15% increase in salary means that if the salary was 100 at the beginning of the second year then it becomes 115 at the beginning of the third year in other words the salary at the beginning of the third year is 115% of the salary at the beginning of the second year or 1.15 now students if we compute the arithmetic mean of these two values we obtain 1.05 plus 1.15 divided by 2 and that is equal to 1.10 in other words according to this particular formula we can say that on the average the salary at the end of a year is 110% of the salary at the beginning of the year 
In other words, according to this formula, the average annual increase is 10 percent. But students, it is important to note that in this particular situation, it is the geometric mean and not the arithmetic mean that provides the correct answer. The geometric mean of the two values 1.05 and 1.15 comes out to be 1.0986 in other words, according to this particular formula, on the average, the salary at the end of a year is 109.886% of the salary at the beginning of the year. In other words, according to this formula, the average percent increase is 9.886, not 10 as we obtained earlier. Now, in order to verify that it is the geometric mean and not the arithmetic mean that provides the correct answer, students, let us assume that the monthly earning of the factory worker was rupees 3000 to start with and he received two increases of 5 percent and 15 percent respectively. So, raise number 1 is 3000 into 0 0.05 and that is 150 rupees. Therefore, at the beginning of the second year, his salary became rupees 3150. Also, raise number 2 is rupees 3150 into 0 0.15 and that is equal to rupees 472.50. Therefore, students adding the two increments in salary, the total increment is rupees 622.50. Now, if we calculate the raise according to the geometric mean that we obtained a short while ago, we have rupees 3000 into 0 0.09886 equal to rupees 296.58 as raise number 1 and rupees 3296 0.58 into 0 0.09886 equal to rupees 325.90 as raise number 2. And students, if we add these two increments, we obtain rupees 622.48 or 622.5 exactly the same as what we obtained just now when we added the actual two increments. Hence, it is clear that in this type of a situation, it is the geometric mean and not the arithmetic mean that provides the correct answer. The next measure of central tendency that I am going to discuss with you is the harmonic mean. Students, harmonic mean jo hai, uski definition to bohati interesting hai. It is defined as the reciprocal of the arithmetic mean of the reciprocals of the values. I know, pehli martaba mein to samaj hi nahi aati ke baad kya ho rahi hai. Let me repeat it for you. The harmonic mean is defined as the reciprocal of the arithmetic mean of the reciprocals of the values. Symbolically, it is equal to n over summation 1 over x. 
जैसे कि आप देख रहे हैं अगर हम इस फॉर्मूले का रेसिप्रोकल ले लें दैट विल बी समेशन वन ओवर एक्स डिवाइडेड बाय एन और आप जानते ही हैं कि किसी भी चीज़ का अगर आप सम लें और टोटल नंबर ऑफ वैल्यूज से डिवाइड कर दें तो दैट इज द अरिथमेटिक मीन ऑफ दोज क्वांटिटीज तो अगर समेशन वन ओवर एक्स ओवर एन की बात हो रही है तो इसका यही मतलब है कि हम वन ओवर एक्स यानी एक्स वैल्यूज के जो रेसिप्रोकल्स हैं उनकी अरिथमेटिक मीन की बात कर रहे हैं सो दैट थिंग विल बी इक्वल टू वन ओवर द हारमोनिक मीन एंड वेन वी टेक द रेसिप्रोकल ऑफ दैट वी ऑप्टेन द हारमोनिक मीन एज आई सेड अर्लियर इक्वल टू एन ओवर समेशन वन ओवर एक्स नाउ दिस इज द फॉर्मूला इन केस ऑफ रॉ डेटा एंड इन द केस ऑफ ग्रुप्ड डेटा दैट इज अ फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन द फॉर्मूला बिकम्स एन ओवर समेशन एफ इन टू वन ओवर एक्स वेर एक्स रिप्रजेंट्स द मिड पॉइंट ऑफ द वेरियस क्लासेस Let me illustrate the computation of the harmonic mean with reference to a simple example. Suppose a car travels 100 miles with 10 stops, each stop after an interval of 10 miles. Suppose that the speeds at which the car travels these 10 intervals are 30 Thirty-five, forty, forty, forty-five, forty, fifty, fifty-five, fifty-five, and thirty miles per hour, respectively. The question is, what is the average speed with which the car travelled the total distance of one hundred miles? Um, once again. पहली बात तो जहन में यही आती है कि अगर हमें एवरेज स्पीड चाहिए तो वी शुड सिंपली फाइंड द अरिथमेटिक मीन ऑफ द टेन स्पीड्स दैट वी हैव सो इफ वी डू दैट वी ऑप्टेन थर्टी प्लस थर्टी फाइव प्लस सो ऑन अप टू थर्टी डिवाइडेड बाय टेन एंड दैट इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी टू माइल्स पर आवर but students if we study this problem carefully we will find out that the arithmetic mean that you have just computed that gives us an incorrect answer i will explain this point in some detail jaisa ki aap shuru se jante hain speed is defined as distance traveled total distance traveled over the total time taken isliye agar hame average speed chahiye us pure 100 mile ke interval ke liye to iska yahi matlab hai ki hame total distance ko divide karna chahiye by the total time taken lekin jaisa ki hum jante hain wo jo 10 10 mile ke intervals hain un sab mein speeds mukhtalif hain so we will have to do the computation step by step for each one of those intervals doing that for the first interval of 10 miles the speed is 30 miles per hour and hence the total time taken to cover that interval of 10 miles will be given by the formula distance over speed because speed is equal to distance over time so naturally time is equal to distance over speed and applying that the time comes out to be 10 divided by 30 that is 0.3333 hours proceeding in exactly the same manner for all the intervals 
we obtain the successive times as 0 0.2857 hours, 0 0.2500 hours and so on. Adding all these times, the total time taken to travel the 100 miles comes out to be 2.4881 hours and dividing the total distance of 100 miles by the total time taken that is 2.4881 hours the true average speed comes out to be 40.2 miles per hour which is not the same as 42 miles per hour the figure that we obtained when we found the arithmetic mean. So, aapne dekha ke arithmetic mean ne to hume is martaba bhi help nahi kiya. Let us see what we get if we apply the harmonic mean in this particular question. We have the column of x that is the column of speeds as 30, 35, 40, 40 and so on. And in order to compute the harmonic mean, the first step is to find the reciprocal of each one of these x values. Doing that, the first reciprocal comes out to be 0 0.0333 the second one as 0 0.0286 and so on and adding all of them sigma 1 over x comes out to be 0 0.2488. Substituting this value in the formula of the harmonic mean we obtain 10 over 0 0.2488 equal to 40.2 miles per hour and students this is exactly the same answer as we what we obtained a few minutes ago as the correct average speed of this vehicle. Students harmonic mean ko compute karne ka tarika to aapne dekh liya. Now the key question is in what situation should we be using the harmonic mean? I think ke by now you might be a bit confused ke pata nahi kaun si situation mein arithmetic mean or kaun si situation mein geometric or kis situation mein harmonic mean use karni chahi. Actually, it is not such a big problem. If we follow two or three basic rules the whole thing will become quite simple. The first rule that I would like to draw your attention to is that when values are given as x per y, where x is constant and y is variable, that is the situation when the harmonic mean is the appropriate average to use. Ye jo example humne abhi discuss kiya. Isme humne dekha ke there is a vehicle which is traveling a total distance of 100 miles but there are 10 stops in that entire interval of 100 miles. Each stop is after an interval of 10 miles. Ye jo point hai ke each stop is after an interval of 10 miles this implies that the distance between any two stops is constant. Or abhi maine aapko jo rule diya tha, usme maine kaha tha ke when the quantities are expressed as x per y and x is constant, then we use the harmonic mean. Abhi is question mein humne ye kaha ke wo jo distances hain, they are constant. Agli baat, ye thi ke wo jo speed hai us vehicle ki 
that is changing from interval to interval. In the first interval, it is 30 miles per hour. In the second interval, it is 35. And in the third interval, it is 40. Now, the question is that the speed in the first interval is 30 miles per hour. This means that 30 is a figure which is actually representing distance over time because it is the speed. Wo jo agla figure hai, 35, that is also representing distance over time. Aur wo jo tisra hai, 40, that is also distance over time. Lekin distance tino mein constant hai, 10 miles, 10 miles, 10 miles. Distance over time, x per y, x constant ho gaya, ab y jo hai, distance over time, yani x per y, yani y represents time, time tino intervals mein vary kar raha hai, because the speed is different. I hope that this lengthy discussion has conveyed to you the point that whenever we have such values which are representing rates x per y and then we have a situation that the numerator x in that problem is constant but the denominator y is varying then it is the harmonic mean and not the arithmetic mean which is the suitable average. Or us situation mein hum kya karenge? If we are averaging rates x per y but it is not x which is constant rather it is y which is constant? The answer to this question is that in this scenario it is the arithmetic mean which is the appropriate average. Let me explain this to you with reference to an example. Suppose that uh, there are 10 students in a particular class and suppose that they obtain the following marks in a test out of 20, 13, 11, 9, 9, 6, 5, 19, 17, 12 and 9. If we find the arithmetic mean, the average marks come out to be 110 over 10 and that is 11. Ye jo maine abhi abhi arithmetic mean compute ki hai, I did it in a very simple way. I simply added those uh, 10 marks and divided by 10. But students, agar aap ghor kare, to maine aap se kaha tha ke ye sare jo marks hai, they were out of 20. Agar is angle se hum in 10 marks ko dekhe, to aap realize karenge that we are dealing with 10 quantities of the form x per y. We have 13 by 13 over 20, 11 over 20, 9 over 20 and so on. Adding these 10 quantities and dividing by 10, we obtain 110 over 20 divided by 10, which is 110 over 10 into 20 and which is equal to 11 over 20. Exactly the same result that I obtained a short while ago when I was adding simply the marks and not using the value 20. After all, jab maine pehle bhi aap se kaha ke mean marks 11 hain, to mera matlab to yehi tha na, ke on the average a student is obtaining 11 out of 20. Alright, let us now consider another example 
to illustrate the fact that it is the harmonic mean which is the appropriate average to use in those situations where values are given as x per y and the numerator x is constant and y is variable. Now students on the first occasion the investor buys shares at the rate of $45 a share. So we can say that $45 is equivalent to one share or in other words $1 is equivalent to 1 over 45 of a share which means that $18,000 are equi equivalent to 1 over 45 into 18,000 shares and that is 400 shares. Similarly, on the second occasion the investor buys shares at the rate of $36 a share. Therefore, if $36 are equivalent to one share, then $18,000 are equivalent to 1 over 36 into 18,000 shares and that is 500 shares. Hence, students in all the investor spends 18,000 plus 18,000 that is 36,000 dollars on 400 plus 500 that is 900 shares. In other words, on the average the investor buys 900 shares at the rate of 40 dollars per share and this is so obviously because 40 into 900 is equal to 36,000. Now students instead of carrying out all these lengthy calculations we find that the harmonic mean yields the same result very quickly. The point to be noted is that since at both occasions the money value of the stock was 18,000 therefore the harmonic mean is the appropriate average to use. Do not forget the rule that we when we have expressions like x per y and x is constant that is the occasion when the harmonic mean is the appropriate average. And in this example the harmonic mean of the two prices that is $45 and $36 is computed by the formula n over summation 1 over x which is equal to 2 over 1 over 45 plus 1 over 36 and upon solving this expression the harmonic mean comes out to be 40. In other words the average price that the investor has paid per share is 40 dollars and students this is exactly the same result as what we arrived at a short while ago. Aye, ab hum in dono rules ko revise kar lete hain jo maine abhi aapke saamne pesh kiye. I said that when quantities are expressed as x per y and x is constant, the harmonic mean is the appropriate average to use. But if the quantities expressed as x per y are such that y is constant then it is the arithmetic mean which is the appropriate average to use. Okay, now we have completed our discussion regarding the arithmetic mean, the geometric mean and the harmonic mean. Before we bring this particular discussion to an end, students I would like to convey to you an interesting relationship that exists between these three measures of central tendency and it is very simple. The relationship is 
that for any data set the arithmetic mean is greater than or equal to the geometric mean and the geometric mean is greater than or equal to the harmonic mean. Iska matlab ye hua ke aisa koi data set nahi ho sakega jisme arithmetic mean might come out to be smaller in magnitude than the geometric or the harmonic mean or that the geometric mean comes out to be smaller than the harmonic mean. If all the values in any particular data set are the same students in that situation the arithmetic mean will be exactly equal to the geometric mean and the geometric mean will be exactly equal to the harmonic mean. Yes, sirf us situation mein when all the values in a data set are equal. Otherwise the arithmetic mean will always come out to be greater than the geometric mean and the geometric mean will come out to be greater than the harmonic mean. Students, many aap ke saath central tendency ke paanch most important or most widely used measures discuss kar liye hain. The arithmetic, geometric and harmonic means, the median and the mode. But you will be interested to know that there are some other measures of central tendency as well. Two of these are the mid range and the mid quartile range and I will discuss them with you one by one. First the mid range. Suppose that we have n observations such that the smallest is denoted by x0 and the largest by xm then the mid range is defined as x0 plus xm over 2. Students, aye zara is formulae par geometrical point of view se gaur karte hain. Zahir hai ke x0 jo smallest value hai that lies on the extreme left of our distribution or xm jo maximum value hai that lies on the extreme right of the distribution. Jab aap in dono ko add karke 2 se divide karenge, to zahir hai ke uska jo answer hoga that will lie somewhere in the middle of the distribution. The other one that I want to discuss is the mid quartile range. If we have n observations x1, x2, so on up to xn and if q1 and q3 represent their first and third quartiles respectively then the mid quartile range is defined as q1 plus q3 over 2. Bilkul pehle ki tara, exactly the same logic. If you add the value of q1 with the value of q3 and divide by 2, you will get a value in the middle of your distribution. So, in this manner, both the mid range and the mid quartile range they act as measures of central tendency of the data set. Ye jo do formulae maine aapko aakhir mein diye hain. Students, I hope that uh, this makes you realize that there are many ways in which you can define measures of central tendency. Ho sakta hai ki aapke zehen mein koi aur formula uh, aa jaye which can be yet a new method of measuring the central tendency of a data set. So why don't you give it a try? Students, we are coming close to the end of today's lecture and in today's lecture and the one before, we have discussed in detail the concept of central tendency. Agli martaba, hum ek aur nahayat important concept discuss karenge and that is the concept of dispersion. Dispersion is 
an important technical term representing the variability that exists in our data set. Peshtar iske ke hum agle topic ki taraf jaye, I would like to revise with you briefly the core concept of central tendency. Jaisa ke mene aap se pehle kaha tha, whenever we conduct a statistical inquiry, we collect a certain amount of data and the first thing a statistician wants to do with this data is to organize it in a summarized and comprehensible form. And we do things like the frequency distribution and the diagrammatic representation like the histogram and the frequency polygon. But students, usually that is not sufficient for our purposes and the statistician is interested in ascertaining one single number that represents that entire data set in some definite way. This number is called an average and it is a measure of the central tendency of the data set. As you have noticed, there are many different ways of finding the central tendency and these various measures, different measures are appropriate in different situations. This brings us to the end of today's lecture. I would like to encourage you to attempt the assignment for this week and also many other problems as many as you can handle. Next time, inshallah, we will begin the concept of dispersion. Best of luck and Allah Hafiz.